Hello, um, welcome to a brand new series of videos from me, Mr. Barton, tentatively called Mr. Barton's Web Whiz, because I couldn't think of a better name for them. And the idea behind these videos is to complement uh, what's proved a very popular page on my website, which is my links to the best maths websites in the world. And on that page, I just give links to some of my favorite maths websites. But the problem there, of course, is that it's all well and good having a link. But often teachers don't have time to fully explore websites. So what I thought I'd do is each week just record a five minute video of me just kind of pottering around some of my favorite maths websites and hopefully unearthing a few little gems in there. And what better place to start than possibly my favorite math website, which is Enrich. So first thing, let's get onto the website. So on Google, type in a bit of Enrich and there it is. Click it and here we go. Now when I visit schools as part of my job as an advanced skills teacher, I tend to find that a lot of teachers think that Enrich is just a collection of puzzles. And on one level it is, but flipping heck it's so much more than that. So hopefully in these next few minutes we'll have a look at what else it can do. So first thing is on the homepage you'll see that there's a for students, for teachers and a STEM Enrich which we'll get onto uh, very soon. So first let's have a look what's going on for students. Now here, this is where students can submit answers to some of the puzzles, and each week Enrich provides different levels of puzzles, um, and there's lots of ones that haven't been solved, and uh, students can submit their solutions there. And it's quite good in a school to get a bit of a ethos going where there's a puzzle each week and students write in their solutions and then prizes if they get published and all that kind of stuff. There's weekly problems, there's investigations, there's games for students to play, and so on. However, probably what's gonna be most useful for us is to look at the teacher stuff that's on there. So what I'm gonna start with is um, to imagine that we're going to be teaching a topic, say percentages or something like that. And how would we find some kind of support or some kind of problem for Enrich to help us? Well, one option is to go search by topic. And this is very, very good. And we get loads and loads and loads of broad topic areas. So what did I mention? Percentages, if I click on fractions, decimals, percentages, ratio and proportion, I get a load of resources there. Now these resources are made up of lots of different things. Some are short, quick fire problems, which can be used for starters or plenaries. Some are more longer problems, which could be used for group work or homework or investigations and things like that. Um, Enrich has a bit of a, a coding system here, challenge level, and it tends to be the the ones with fewer stars are the shorter ones and the longer stars are the more um, investigative ones. And um, that's one way to search and we're going to dive into one of these problems in a second. But this is probably the best way. Wait till you see this. If you haven't seen these two documents, they're absolutely fantastic. If I just return back home and I go down here to the four teachers and show teacher menu, the cur curriculum mapping documents. So I'll give these a click. Now these are absolutely outstanding for maybe building a scheme of work or just referring to throughout your general teaching. If I click on the key stage three and four mapping document, um, and I click open. Well, I'm not actually gonna do that because I've already pre-opened one just to save some time. But if you click open, you get a, um, a Microsoft Word file that looks like this. Now that's the entire maths framework, but the beauty of it is it's hyperlinked to supporting problems. So if you will know your teaching fractions, decimals and percentages, and if I just scroll to the very top, you'll see it's broken down into year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10, year 11 and extension. So if you know you're teaching a particular topic, you can just find that hold down control, click on it, and it will take you to a brilliant puzzle or problem from that. And if it's got a red tick next to it, that means um, it's got full teacher support. So we'll just wait till this loads up and we'll just have a look at this problem here. So there's a little problem on, called diminishing returns. Each one has teacher notes with it, explaining why you might want to do the problem, a possible approach, extension, other supports uh, linked into problems hints, solutions, and a printable page. Absolutely fantastic. But that's not all, because the eagle-eyed among you would have noticed that there's also a key stage five A-level mapping document on the same page where you can find rich extension problems for your A-level students for, um, for the core, and there's a kind of work in progress statistics and mechanics one, which is absolutely world-class. But best of all, there's the problems themselves. Now, um, I'll show you some of my favorite ones here just to get the ball rolling. If I again go down for teachers, 
Um, because some of the best ones I like are ones with interactive resources because you can kind of frame your own problems around them. So there's loads of amazing interactive ones. There's lot, uh, lottery simulators, an absolutely fantastic one for talking about probability and generating different number of draws and just spicing up that topic, which is absolutely fantastic. Choose your amount of numbers, choose your tickets, and then whenever you're ready, if I just uh, pop on a few numbers here, and I just simulate some lottery draws. We get loads of good stuff going on there and it's fully adaptable as well. It's absolutely um, excellent, really, really good. But my all time favorite one and anyone who's been to see me doing any talks recently will know I'm a little bit obsessed with geoboards and I'll tell you what would help if I could spell geoboard right. So let's try that one again. Geoboard, give that a little click. And this is absolutely world class, the virtual geo board. And again, it's got loads of support with it, but you can just invent your own problems. My favorite one, and again, for anyone who's seen me, is with a nine pin geo board. And it's to ask how many different angles between 10, oh, sorry, excuse me, how many different angles between 10 and 180 degrees in multiples of 10 can you make on this geo board? Well, there's a little triangle there. And how big's that angle? Well, I'm pretty sure if it's divided up into nine um, equal spaces, that's probably 40 degrees. And if this is isosceles, because they're radii, that's 70 degrees and that's 70 degrees. So that's 40 and 70 box stuff. But how many of the others between 10 and 180 can you make? And that's just a problem that I got inspired by Enrich. Um, a couple of other things I'll show you just before I shut up. Um, is that it's a lot of schools have poster competitions going, but it's quite time consuming for teachers to generate poster puzzles, but it's such an excellent thing to do. Well, not a problem here, because if I scroll down here to other freebies, wait till you see this. Um, 108 ready-made poster problems, and they're absolutely fantastic um, for all different levels, stage three, four, and five in primary school. If I just click on one of these, you get them in a full color PDF, you can get them in a PNG image, you can stick those up, put them on your VLA, wherever you want. And the final thing I'll show you, which again is probably an underused part. Oh God, flipping out, there's another one. There's two things I forgot to, I haven't even touched on STEM and Rich. If I click on STEM, Again, this is all numeracy across the curriculum and it links maths into physics and chemistry and all that kind of stuff. I'll just show you quickly one of my favorite things I was looking at before. I used to like doing these things at school, where they're the uh, logic gates. Now, where is it? Here it is. Um, teaching students about and or gates and all that kind of stuff. And can you mess around with things to make that light bulb uh, light up at the end? And I quite like doing this. So if two things that and that goes it lights that up but if i change that to a not or and all that kind of thing i, li I like stuff like that so and that's very good for physics chemistry and all that and the final thing i'll show you is the ask enrich little section here and this is brilliant for encouraging students to do independent research because you've got really really helpful people of enrich and all the other users on there who are more than happy to help with any tricky math problems and you've got please explain which is good for key stage three and key stage four students and then this is the onwards and upwards is what i tend to encourage my students to go to if they've troubled with a level and then even for university students you've got that and that's just a really friendly forum where students can submit problems and I've, i must admit as a teacher myself i've uh, submitted a few myself and you always get really really helpful replies so there is enrich it's an absolutely fantastic website if you haven't visited it get on it and if you haven't been on it for a while please go on there and have a little play around i could not recommend it highly enough okay i'll be back with a brand new maths website next week Take care. Bye-bye for now.